Hello everybody. This is my virtual art class in the days of coronavirus. So I hope you're all staying home and staying safe. I am going to paint you a portrait. I'm starting with a fresh piece of palette paper. The canvas that I'm using is not that I expect you guys to use the same thing, but uh, just so you know what I'm using, sometimes people ask me, so I'm going to tell you. It is uh, made by Fredericks, and it's a acrylic primed ultra smooth canvas, and it's actually not 100% cotton. It's a polyflax cotton, so it's partially synthetic. And I actually really like this surface because it's, um, it doesn't have a lot of texture to it. When I'm not painting on canvas, I really prefer painting on panels, which have a really smooth surface as well. So when I do work on canvas, I kind of like to have them more like a panel. So as I said, it's a 9 by 12, and I'm just going to take the plastic off of it. It's a new one. I'm just going to launch right in and start drawing. I've got my um, my reference on an iPad off to my right because I'm left-handed. But my right eye sees distance better than my left eye, so I like to have my iPad off to my right. They even give you spam phone calls when you're doing demos, it's a pain. All right, so here we go. So I'm looking at the overall tilt of the head and um, this model is rotated so it's in three-quarter position plus he has his chin down um, I don't think he's got his head tilted as well so hopefully not because that makes everything pretty complicated so I'm gonna try to get top of his head here his chin about here and the overall sort of turn of his head is um, just a very slight sometimes if you put a true vertical down and then you figure what how much out of vertical your reference is that can help you sometimes so compared to vertical it's really easy to overdo this angle so I try to have something to compare it to to stop myself from going too crazy and then um, I'm going to, I like to, I'm going to do it the way I do it so that you can just see that. I know I've showed you guys how to just put the lines on. I like to get a circle on right away. So I'm just going to start with putting a circle on his head here. looking at the angle that the eyes are at and I know that the nose is going to be about here so. and because it's a three-quarter we have to add extra skull here and this is where his jaw is coming in So 
So I think we've talked in class about the fact that the circle really doesn't mean that much. It just is a way to help you get a big form down fast. So the circle kind of helps me see where the bottom of the nose is, but unless I've measured everything, um, it's really just a guess. So my next thing is to figure out, are the eyes actually halfway on this particular reference? Because he's got his head tilted or tipped down, so there is some foreshortening. So I'm measuring from um, the corner of his eye to the top of his skull, which means I have to estimate where that is, I'm comparing it to eye to chin. So that's pretty equal. So that means that I'm saying this is the top of his skull, and I'm guessing where his eyes go. So one, nope, they're lower. So his eyes are going to be maybe here. Yeah. So that will be his tear ducts right there. Eye line. Then I'm guesstimating how much above his eyes his eyebrows are. So we're going to put his eyebrows there. And then um, I can divide, assuming this works on him, from the eyebrows to the bottom of the nose should equal bottom of the nose to the chin. So I'm just testing that. And notice that I'm measuring uh, things vertically rather than on an angle. And I do that because it's really hard to um, get the exact right angle. So about a nose nose to chin, that's pretty much equal. So that means I can go from here to here, divide it in half for the nose and just see whether my circle came in there. So this little line where I guesstimated where the nose goes earlier, that's pretty much exactly spot on. Surprise, surprise, huh? Here we go. So this would be nose, chin, eyebrows, and now I need his hairline. Normally the hairline to the eyebrows is the same as the eyebrows to the nose and the nose to the chin. Let's see if that's true with him. Yes. So whatever this distance is right here, it's the same for the hairline. That's his hairline. And his hair kind of does a little widow's peak right here. And remember, this is the top of the skull, not necessarily where the hair ends. So he's got hair up above there. So I can kind of see how much hair he's got by comparing it to something. It's sort of almost a nose. So he needs exactly that much hair. I love it when that works out. So then um, I'm just going to quickly put in a shape for his hair. Okay. Now, looking at his forehead it's not exactly vertical. Kind of angles in a little. Pretty vertical from here. Then it starts angling in. Then we're into this eyebrow deal. This is some really soft charcoal. I'm going to go switch my stick. Get something harder. So one thing I want to know is where does his nose start? there. 
And then his nose and his cheeks sort of parallel each other. The eye socket comes in in front of the cheek, and then the cheek is behind. And the cheek goes pretty much straight down till the bottom of the nose. And then it angles in. bottom of the nose sticks out just a little bit farther than that, so about there. is the other eyebrow, about here, angles up, and then back down. I'm looking at the shadow shape, it lines right up with the tear duct. line here. looks pretty good. Then he's got all that shadow and then the line between the lips is normally one-third of the way from the bottom of the nose to the chin so I just want to check that. Yes, perfect. So this distance from here to here I want the top third. So let's see. One, two, three. Got it. And it's also on an angle. And I'm looking at where that corner of the mouth is. And it sticks out a little farther than the nose, so something is off here. I don't have an eraser. It's not a good idea. this direction. So. Try that. And that gives me just a little space push his mouth over because I've got to go here, here, line between the lips. Center of his mouth lines up with
side. Looks pretty good. I've got this pretty strong chin. There. Gonna add that little bit extra that we always add to men's jaws. Take off my circle now. It's in my way. And now I want to know from the um, nose to the jaw, chin to the eye. So. Jaws actually out here. A lot of space over there, this guy. This is a little flatter. Bottom of the ear, about there. Top of the ear, and his ears are high because he is uh, flexing his head down. And now he's going to need a whole lot more hair. That's a lot of hair. <laughs> a lot of hair.
we'll play with the hair later, so that's a good start. And then his clothes, I'm going to do... Got a tie on right here. Collar. Coat. Big shadow kind of comes down like so to his collar. And then, although I don't intend to uh, keep them, I want to just take a quick look at where the eyes might go to make sure that they look okay. So he's got one here. Cheekbones, da, 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 da. he's got hair here. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the space between his eyebrow and his hair. And then he's got this big old cheekbone. I like this. I want to make sure that these cheekbones line up. So this cheekbone isn't right yet. showing where the donut around his mouth is. It's helping me to see the cheekbone better. line up the cheekbones. I think this side of the face is one of the absolute hardest things in portrait drawing, is getting this line just right. Very hard. too much detail in the nose because it's just all going to get filled in with shadow. Speaking of shadow, I want to draw in the shadow shape carefully so it goes Okay. 
And that would be pretty much the drawing. See how far his coat goes out. And whether it goes off the page, and it does. So. Phase one finished. So I'm going to mix up some paint. I'm going to mix up black and white, and um, I'm going to do that not while I'm filming, just to save room on the tape. But you know, in class, that's what you would do. You just either come in with it already mixed, or this would be the time when you're mixing it. So here goes. Camera on. Just doing a little bit of speech lineup. So I am going to use a little bit of solvent. That's the clear stuff. To do a wash of the shadows. So I always like to get my shadows in transparently and that means thinning the paint. And I'm going to use black with uh, solvent, so it gives me a transparent paint. I'm using a pretty big brush, and I'm just dipping into the solvent and mixing black paint with it, testing a little bit. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to start by putting in this big dark mass of his hair. I haven't fixed the drawing with um, a charcoal pencil, so it's still just the vine charcoal and it's going to disappear the minute I touch it. So my drawing is not going to be around for very long. I could have fixed the lines, but I like to leave a lot of this transparent paint even all the way in, in the final piece and uh, I don't want those lines showing through. But that's just a personal choice, so you feel free to do whatever you want. And then I'm looking at this shadow down the side of his head. I'm going to put that in. Into his eye sockets. This one too. base of his nose, including the cast shadow under it. So see how if I had done a really careful drawing I'd be crying right now because it's all gone. I don't think I got this high enough so I'm gonna a little adjustment. Over here. Just looking for all the shadows. And I'm simplifying them. I'm not trying to use any sort of lighter or darker tone in the shadows. I'm just using the exact same color everywhere that I see a shadow. Some things will fool you and make you think they're a shadow when in fact they're a half tone. So um, that's one thing where it's useful to be in class with me when you're doing this because I can say, oh no, 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 that's not a shadow. That's a half tone. But in general, 
shadows are anywhere where you can connect them. If you had to put a shadow like in the middle of his forehead, you saw a dark there, or in the middle of his cheek, chances are that is not a shadow. It's just going to look like a polka dot. So you're better off, even if it is, quotes, a shadow, you're better off leaving it out. And sometimes, uh, this guy has a dimple. It's got a cute dimple in his cheek. And it's just this one little piece of light in here, and it's easier for me to put that in later um, rather than paint around it with the shadows. So I uh, try to do as big a job with the shadows as possible right from the start. And his neck is in shadow. Shadow, shadow, shadow. His tie is really dark, so I'm going to put that in at this point. I usually um, don't try to interpret light and shadow that much on the clothes. I save them for the final. But since he has this really big cast shadow over this piece of his coat, I'm going to put that in. Everything is a guess right now, and that's why I'm not being very careful. Well, it looks like I'm not being very careful, but actually I am. <laughs> I am being very careful. I'm also going to put a little bit of value behind the lit side of his face, because um, the reference has him against a white background. I don't want that. I want him to have a variegated background with a gradient on it. So I'm actually just connect, correcting that shape right there. It's kind of angular through here. And then see this little curve over his mouth? That's really typical because of the, the teeth under there. It's usually a curve over, over the mouth area. So putting all of this value on here is going to really, really help me later on when I'm trying to evaluate how light his skin is. Now I put dark against the light side of him, but I don't want dark against the dark side of him. I want to swap. So right here where his eyes are so dark, I'm actually not going to put dark back there. And I'm not going to put dark behind his hair. So how do you do that? Well, you just kind of faded out. So when I get the actual paint on there you'll see it better, but for now I just want to make sure this stuff doesn't get into that area, but I do want a little bit of dark on his against his forehead here. Hopefully I'll have time to make this kind of subtle right now. It's very crude. But I don't want to spend a lot of time on the background in the beginning because I need time to paint him. Remember, we're on the clock, so when you're in class and you're having a good old time working on one little thing, you got to remember to look at the clock and say, uh oh, model's leaving. Because our goal here is to be able to work from a model, and that means they're going to take breaks and they're going to be gone at the end of the session and you won't have them there to paint from anymore so you just got to get it done and whatever you end up with you have to be happy with so I love that because then you don't have to worry about whether it really looks like them or not so um, you can worry about whether it looks like them when it's a commission or your family or a forgery for this it's just fun don't even think about it She says as she fiddles with the background. I can't help myself. Okay, that's good. And then I'm also just going to put some value on his jacket because I don't want it to be white. So the, the background back here, it's a little wet from my solvent, so it's not sticking, but I want the background back here to be darker than the jacket. So... around with it. And then the 
jacket. Maybe a little bit lighter. A little more solvent in the mix. And this too. His shirt is actually in shadow, so it's going to not be white, but for now I'm just going to leave it because I don't want to get it, lose everything in here. If I merge all these lines, I have no drawing at all. Okay, so there is that. And I've mixed up three piles of solid paint that don't have uh, solvent in them, and they are going to represent the value of the reflected light, which is part of the shadow, it's the lightest part of the shadow. The value of the half tone, which is where we're going to soften between the shadow and the light. And I also have a pile for um, a basic light value, not the highlight, but just general lit plane. So now I'm going to just put in some halftone transition areas while this dries because I don't want to go in there and lay on the reflected light paint and while that solvent is still so sloppy so I'm actually moving into the uh, shadows now so I'm going with halftone I'm sorry I'm moving into the lights now because halftone is part of the light it's the darkest part of the light and it always occurs where there is a rounded form that is turning away from the light. So his cheek is like a sphere and the lit side is here and the shadow side is here and this is where we're putting some half tone to turn from light into shadow. So I just lay it right on the border in between the two forms like this. And this is where I can start putting in his dimple, because his dimple is half tone. He doesn't have a cleft chin like some men do, so I don't have to work on that. That can be that can take a while to paint. Um, his temple is pretty much half tone. Here. So. Side of his nose here is half tone. And then there's a lot of half tone turning the ball of the nose into the shadow. Now he does have a lit a lighter area on the wing of this nostril, but I'll lay that in on top of the half tone later. He's got a little bit of half tone from the smile line that he's got because he's not a spring chicken. He's actually got a few little lines already. And then half tone usually occurs also on the far edge of uh, a round form. So the edge of his face here is half tone. Notice that I'm not trying to change the color or the value of anything. I'm just putting in big statements, big monolithic statements of what I think the simplest way to represent the light and shadow on his face is. There's also half tone right here in this area that we call the glabella. Glabella, funny word. And then um, this is something that I put in just because I know about the skull, and that is that there are these big uh, frontal bones here 
and they usually have a round kind of a round form to them like this and so I'm just going to put a little half tone there to help model and mold that form later on um, he's also got a pretty good um, brow ridge here so I'm going to just slightly darken behind the brow ridge so that I can pull that forward with some light as well and these are things that unfortunately you don't often see in the reference. After you know about them, you tend to see them more. But at first, um, if you don't really study the anatomy of the head, it's pretty hard to interpret a reference and to know what's going to go there. Which is why I'm talking about it, because I want you to start uh, doing some of these things that I do. Do what I do at all times. Okay, um, the value of his white shirt down here I am going to make the same as the value of the half tone of his face because his shirt compared to his skin is on a different scale of value his shirt is white his face is not white so when the white shirt is in shadow, it's the whole register of everything starts off lighter, which means his half tone is going to be, or his reflected light. Basically, this shirt is in reflected light value, so um, it's going to be lighter than the reflected light on this guy's face because it started out whiter. I hope that isn't too garbled. <laughs> I'm trying to make some sense, but. That would be something we'd go back to the sphere for, because imagine if you had a white sphere, a gray sphere, and a black sphere, and you're trying to figure out what value they're, um, cast shadow, core shadow, half tone, reflected light, lit plane, and highlight would be. So on a black ball, of course, the values are going to be different than on the white ball, even though they still have to show that change of value and change of plane. So that's all I'm talking about. That's why I can use what is actually a, a value in the light for a value in the shadow on his shirt. Oh, man, could have made that easier. Sorry. Anyway, now I'm going to put in the uh, general lit plane of his skin. So here we go. And this is a lighter value. I'm hoping it's light enough. I think it's okay. I'm just kind of butting up to those half tones that I put in. Don't merge anything together yet. Just put down little islands of value, like a jigsaw, like a crossword puzzle or a jigsaw puzzle. Not a crossword puzzle. <laughs> a jigsaw puzzle little shapes that sit next to each other and they slot together like this. So he's going to be really graphic right now. I'd like you to notice what I have not painted yet. His eyes. The details in his nose, all of that. I'm just trying to get a big block in so that I can judge my values. Still using the big brush. And as far as the amount of paint I'm using, um, I'm using enough paint so that it's going to be wet to paint into. If I just scrub this paint on thinking that I'm being careful and I'm trying not to make goop or make a mess for myself later, you're making a mess for yourself later because the whole idea is to be able to paint into the wet paint with more wet paint and have it all do that beautiful mergey thing that it does when it's in the sweet spot. So if you're just gently scrubbing color on like this, just being oh so careful, you cannot paint onto that. So the amount of paint that I'm putting on here is, um, it's not ridgy, 
you know, like lardy, but it's definitely wet and slippery. There's enough paint on there that when I paint onto it, it's going to suck up the paint that I apply and stick to it the next layer. So this is my block-in layer, and I've got to have enough paint on it to paint the next layer onto. Our motto is paint with paint. Paint with paint. That and black is blue. If you just remember those two things, you're in pretty good shape. Now obviously these areas that have the solvent on them are going to have to uh, be fixed. <laughs> but I'm just leaving them for now to dry out a little bit. And solvent evaporates fairly quick, quickly, so um, that's not going to take too long. And one of the really nice things about doing these shadows initially with paint mixed with solvent is that uh, if this was solid black paint, every time I put a, a half tone against the edge here, I'd have a brush full of black paint. And pretty soon that black paint would have got into everything. And then I'd have a really, really hard time getting clean mixtures on the light, the lit plane. So they're there to represent, yes, this will be dark eventually. Um, you've set your shadows. You can also kind of tell how the likeness is once you've got a big shadow shape in. But try not to put too much actual thick black paint down until you're ready to handle it and ready to deal with it. So that is my word on the why we're using that solvent. In addition to the fact that usually shadows just look better when they're transparent as a general rule of painting. So on this nose here, um, notice that I've sort of left it. It's not because I'm being a chicken. It's that it's such a small space. And if I put on some, and it's a, it's a very lit plane because it's much more facing the light. So if I put on a darker light up there, then I'm gonna have a hard time getting it light enough later because it's so small um, and can't take a lot of overpainting. So I'm just going to mix up a lighter value just for the nose, and I'm going to lay that on. So here we go. Just because I have to have some paint there, but I, I don't want that darker paint to be there yet. So. Like that. Now I can butt this half tone up to the edge. Lose the edge at the tip. Okay. Now I'm just doing a quick look at my drawing. I think I have to bring his coat up a little bit here. I'm good with that. So we have now blocked him in. And now comes the fun part and the, um, the slow part. So there will be no more sort of big, big moves. What I mean by big moves is when I'm coming in with my brush and I'm like slashing and burning and just putting a bunch of paint down. Now every stroke needs to be considered and thought about. So now is the time that I'm going to go in and take a dab, a stab at uh, getting his eyes at least more detailed than they are now to see if I can start developing a bit of an expression on him. Many things are probably not in quite the right place yet. Like I'm looking at his mouth and I'm thinking, oh, I don't think I believe that. I don't think it's in the right place yet. But I'll get there. I'll get there. So uh, I'm going to switch now from this number six 
to a number four, which is this guy right here. So this is the comparison. This is this is the one I was using, and this is the one I'm going to use. And they're not hugely different, but to get into the eyes, I just want a little bit more control. And I also want a little bit more coffee. So I'm just going to pour myself some. So I've been going, I don't know exactly when I started, but a little under an hour probably. So you should have your block in done in the first hour. Some, some people are really good and they can get it done in like the first half hour. And if I had a model in front of me, I, I might be working for that. But to me, um, the block-in kind of sets the stage for everything else fitting into place. So I don't like to rush through that just to get to the details. Because you can have beautiful details and have them in the wrong place. And then, uh-oh, it doesn't look good. So here we go. I'm going to get some dark, dark. I'm going to try laying in where I think his irises are going to go, just generally, just make sure I get them in the right place. And I'm not using black yet, straight black. Eyebrows are very expressive, so take some time to look at what shape they are and also what their edge quality is. And I'm, I have the great good fortune of working from a blurry photo, so that means that I don't get to... Um, apply it a lot of detail. It's more about just big shapes. <coughs> Excuse me. Always look for where the peak of the eyebrow is. It's usually over towards the um, the temple where that changes because it falls on the plane change between the front of the face and the side of the face. So often the eyebrow turn will be right there where that changes. This guy has really cool eyebrows. I like him a lot. I think. I think this is George Mason. He's an actor who might not even still be alive. So now I'm using some of that reflected light value paint that I mixed up.
Yeah, it's kind of quiet at this point because it's just a lot of looking and thinking and fixing and so on. So you'll just have to bear with me because I can't talk and think at the same time. <laughs> Not very well anyway. And I am switching between values for the half tone and values for the reflected light by just kind of wiping my brush off in between. I know you probably aren't going to be able to see my palette in this video, but whenever my brush disappears, it means that I'm going to get more paint. And that is your rhythm. Put stroke down. Stop, go get more paint, wipe your brush off, in between each stroke, get more paint, etc. And I'm going to take a risk and put his nostril in at this point. It's pretty big, pretty dark. That. And then I'm going to pick up the cast shadow under his nose. There's actually a lot of reflected light under in that cast shadow under here because of his lip bouncing back into it. So I'll probably have to feed more light into it later. What I want to do now is separate the bottom of his nose from the cast shadow, though. It's my main job, main goal. If I can place his mouth, I'm very concerned about the position of his mouth. I think it starts here. And I'm looking at the line between the lips. And then the center of it is way off where you think it would be because it's way over to this side, which frankly I don't understand, but that's what it does. So I've got to. Like right there. I'm just going to make a mark for it. And then the other corner of the mouth is lining up with the edge of this eye, which is a big mouth. It's pretty wide. Usually it comes out to like the inside of the of the iris. Maybe that's why he's such a famous movie star, because he has a big mouth. They all do. It's one of those beauty objects that you have if you have a movie star face. Big mouth. Okay, here we go. I'm really trying to observe what that line is doing. Down, up, down, center, up, over. Already he seems to have a fairly happy expression, pleasant. You know, sometimes they come out snarling and um, they stay that way. He could still change, he could turn into a snarler, but I like it when they are 
friendly to me. <laughs> this one angles down more. He does have a little downturn in his corners of his mouth. I remember that's the line between the lips, and I always make it wider than it needs to be, and then carve into it with the upper and lower lips. So I'm going to create the edge of the lower lip by using this shadow shape. So I'm looking at the center is over here. So it goes up to the center, down, curves, and that's it. So that will end up being what shapes his lower lip later. I'm looking at how much distance I have here, and I think this needs to come over more. I'm going to look at him in the mirror. This can be a moment of shock when you look and say, oh man, he's so out of symmetry, but actually he looks pretty good. So, I'll keep going. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is Try to get this shadow and ear in. So I'm using my reflected light value to do the ear, and I'm just lining up straight across, make sure it's high enough. It is. That's going to be hair. So his ear is kind of. And often the ear will be at the same, the edge of the ear against the face will be at the same angle as the nose, and that is true here. So his so ear is going to be like this. And I can leave some of that nice transparent shadow value in the ear if I want to. I don't know yet if I will, but I can if I want to. Because it's my painting. I can do what I want. It's got a little shiny bit here that's slightly lighter than there. And then I don't want to have blank canvas there, and I also don't want it to be stark white. So this is a good time for me to um, just put some paint on back there. It also gives me a wet edge to paint into when I'm doing his hair. And even for this ear and the neck and all of that, I need a wet edge. So. I should actually be using my bigger brush for this. Switching back to the six. And then remember, everything needs a gradient in the background, so I'm going to let it get slightly darker as it goes up to the top. And um, I'm going to use this value for um, I want it really light down here around his neck, so I'm working some white into it. my gradient will be lighter to darker. And this is smushing. It's a very technical activity. It's where you've already laid down some paint. It's not quite the right color or value. And so you just force a new layer of paint into it. So I'm overpowering it with new paint by just pushing right into it. Otherwise, 
you never paint like this where you're kind of stroke, stroke, stroking. That's just not not good painting. So um, I don't do that except when I'm smooshing. Right. And then I can go to this slightly darker value up here and use the little crisscrossy stroke to get it blended into the smooshed area. So that we don't see a seam there, it needs to be kind of a seamless transition. There we go. And then this is going to be the same value that I put against his eye here. This is kind of darker. So I'm going to lay it right here. So dark against light, that's my goal. and dark against light. So here we're going back to light behind his hair. But not here where his forehead is. Sounds weird, I know. What the heck is she doing? Don't understand. How are we going to get these little railroad tracks filled in? So I will show you. I hope that the sound of this paintbrush isn't super annoying on that tape recorder, which is right next to the brush. I hope. Okay, so this is too much the same, so I'm going to actually work some more dark smush. I should say, some more dark into this corner. I expect you all to come back to class after our quarantine using the word schmush. And I'll know you watched the video. And there will be a quiz. Okay, now I want this darker than his face right here. So I'm going to grab this. Just for the edge. I'm going to go dark against light, light against dark, dark against light, light against dark, and then we're going to just merge into this shadow down here, which I'll kind of repaint. Now, what do we do with this? Well, we have to get more paint on, first of all. And uh, it's going to be dark for the most part. And then we're also going to bridge from here into here with that little X E stroke. Don't want it to be obvious what we've done here. I'm barely touching the paint and I'm just trying to get a little bit of a merge between these values here. You all remember the day you had to do your gradation. So that's the job at hand. And where I mostly want that change in value is up against the edge because it gives me an edge to work into where I can hold the edge without a line. Right here we're going to have a lost edge, which is always a nice thing to have. And we could probably have a lost edge. Um, when I get the dark hair in, we could probably get a little bit of a lost edge right here as well. And those lost edges really help him have some atmosphere around him.
And now into the dark stuff. So I'm gonna start off by laying down some reflected light value. And then gradually add more and more black to the mixture. Now it's going to be rough. And I actually really like this um, transparent dark down there, so I'm going to try not to lose all of it. And I'm wiping my brush off in between each of these. So here I need a bridge. So I need a new paper towel. And I'm just removing paint now. To get the blend. So see how flat my brush is? I'm using it as an eraser. Taking paint off. And here I just want it to kind of disappear down into that transparent dark. So I'm sort of scrubbing it thinly down into that. So I love that little bit of texture there. Really cool. And this is too abrupt, so I need a bridge. I'm actually going to get a clean brush. That one's pretty clogged. Anytime I'm trying to blend, I always hold the brush really flat rather than like this. Because I'm I don't want any pressure. I don't want any digging into the paint. Just gently sort of removing it and moving it around. Okay. And the reason I left that is because I have to have another look at the side of his face and see what that shape is. So I think he cuts in more. He's got kind of a a sharp cheek turn. So I'm gonna grab my littler brush. Try to get in there and do that. This side of the face thing, man, it just drives me crazy. It's so hard to do to get this line just so. a little better. Okay. Now this paint that I'm putting on now is actually on his skin, not the background. Got a little bit of a, a darkness there, which is going to take a while to get just right. occurs to me that I need to check that we're still recording. I don't know if there's enough time on my XD card for how long I've been painting, so I'm going to stop in a second, just have a look at that. I like this edge to be quite soft. 
because it is a turning away edge. So even though you sometimes see a very high contrast edge there because of the dark against light, um, you have to make it soft anyway. Take a look at Vermeer. Oh my gosh, the girl with the pearl earring, that line. Oh, it's just exquisite. Every time I do one of these, I think of that and I think, oh, please. Johannes, come to me. Let me channel your beautiful talent. I always call on the old masters to help me. And he is definitely getting wacky. I gotta be careful. Careful, careful, careful. So. edges are where it's at. I'll spend hours on edges and, you know, do the eyes in five minutes. Okay, I'm going to check my card, make sure we're still rolling. So this is the time when I start thinking, I don't know how to paint, I don't know what to do, I don't know how it should look, and you'll probably have a moment like that in your paintings as well, so when that happens, just stand back and think, what's missing? So I'm looking at him and I'm thinking, well, I don't think this looks right over here. So I'm going to start working on that shadow. I know that his hair shape is wrong, and that if you have the wrong outer contour, sometimes it makes the face look wrong too. And also remember that I just have these laid in as sort of um, jigsaw pieces right now, and they're going to be merged and made more beautiful at some point too. But the biggest issue I have right now is trying to work out the shape of this side of his head. So I'm actually going to stop and do a little bit of measuring and I'm looking at how far is it from the side of his nose to the uh, jaw and then comparing it to something on his face. So I'm looking at my reference and I'm just saying, all right, if I go from the wing of the nostril to the jaw, that's the same as mouth to eyebrow, so assuming this is right, which it may not be, <laughs> his jaw is not big enough, so actually that that's crazy. That means this is not in the right place, so I need to find something else. Straight across. That's more like it. So yeah, his jaw isn't big enough. Wow, that's amazing. So his ear's going to move. And I have to move his jaw out to here. Right there. And I am going to fill up the jaw with reflected light value. trying to judge how level this is. It comes down. I'm going to just merge it into his neck for now. Because I don't know where that is yet. Does that look better? I think that does look better, actually. And then his ear actually has to move considerable distance, because if this is his jaw, here, 
This is his neck. His ear starts up next to the jaw. He's got a little ear. That might work. Okay. I'll take it. Make it a little bigger. I'm just going to fill that in for now. I'm stepping back. Yeah, it looks okay. And then I'm going to make some hair color fairly dark because his hair is very dark in this side. And I'm going to go have to move. Jaw's going to come out even further. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I hope I'm not imagining this. It does happen sometimes. So that means his neck is actually here. So the ear would have to be like that. his neck in. And his coat. I'm stepping back again to have a look. Okay. Okay. And let's get some hair in for a quick look. So I'm looking at eye, shadow, halftone, hair. Hair up to here. And when I first measured the, the width of his jaw, I was kind of shocked at how much space he has across here. And I think that because he's outside the norm, I probably, you know, just by default uh, refused <laughs> in my um, subconscious mind to put it in. So now I get to do it again. A little ear stuff in, a little ear. That looks better. Now I'm happier. And then his hair is going to go out past his ear a little bit. So that looks okay. And this part goes from here to here, so the part starts there, and there, so it's on an angle, that's his part, goes up, and then down, and then on the other side, it's a little lower, it's rounded, one of those, And I don't think it sticks out as far as I've got it, so I'll just try cutting it off about here. That means I can take some of this out. Just painting over it. And then you have to make sure when you patch something like that that you don't leave the strokes that go around it because it looks like a halo. So you have to go in and modify the direction of the strokes a little bit so that it doesn't look like a patch. So I don't want them to go around, I want them to go out away from it. 
and be a little more random. And now I'm just going to look at him in a mirror again and see whether I'm happy with that. There's still something weird going on. Let's try that. value in and see. I'm trying not to get invested in his likeness because I don't have time. But, <laughs> you know, we all kind of want to, you know, it's like a, an ego thing in a way. I need it to look like him. So I'm going to really try not to get too carried away with making it him and do what I tell you guys, which is make it a human and be happy that you achieve that. So I'm trying to be a better teacher and let you do what I and do as I tell you rather than having special rules for myself. Now on the hair, um, we're going to have a merge between the skin and the hair here. So I'm going to lay down a big swath of mid-tone to paint into right against the hairline, right here. So that's pretty thick paint and I'm putting it on with this brush that already had black in it. So um, that's not necessary, it just looks darker than it would have if I'd used a clean brush. So not a big deal. Um, just wanted you to know that that wasn't, that's not necessary. I don't want you outlining all your hairlines with dark like that. Mostly I'm just looking for a half tone, but my brush was dirty. But that never bothers me because I know I can paint over anything. So then I'm going to start trying to pull some texture into this hair. So there's a little bit right here, and don't use white. Um, on hair highlights. So that's just kind of a mid-tone right there. I'm just trying to get a little bit of something happening in his hair. There's no time to really render polished hair, but um, you can get something going. And he's also got... So I'm using the reflected light value right now, which looks very light compared to this black, but it's actually pretty dark. If I were to put some on his face, it would be very dark. Now I need to get these dark roots coming in here like this, and I'm painting them into that wet paint that I already laid down. I'm trying to go in the direction that the hair would grow, or be combed, I should say. And then I really need a soft edge back here. Hair is kind of fly away, so you always need to really rough up these edges and create a little more of a sense of texture. Another reason why you need all that background paint to help you. Here I'm trying to avoid a halo. And it would help if I had a cleaner brush. my 
light paint and I'm going to go over this edge. So I'm going to try and drag some skin up into his hair. bigger, cleaner brush and just start sort of dragging here, wiping between each stroke. I also want to get some up into his part. occurred to me that I never checked the camera after I raised the uh, canvas. <laughs> Let me go check and make sure this is filming. Okay. It's not directly in the middle of the focal area, but I think it'll do. Okay. Now, let's just get some harder edges of his skin. So we want that super soft edge of the hair against the skin. But then you have to throw a couple of hard edges back in or else it just looks too mushy. We don't like mushy. <clears throat> and now some accents. So around this side, I can get a really nice dark accent. Be careful you don't do this with hair, like stroke, 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 stroke. It's got to be very random. And I have to say, you guys uh, in class who've been doing the portraits have been doing a fabulous job with hair, so I don't think there's too much I have to say to you about that. There's also going to be some really dark stuff at the roots here, dragging into that lighter area. So some dark. This is the lit part, and then it comes over that little hill and darkens as it falls down. And you always have to pull a few across the light. Kind of a throw and a catch deal. And then I'm going to take some of the half tone value and just Gently throw in a couple of little lighter hairs here and there. It's really easy to overdo this. So. Same here, this is the dark roots and then the light is right here. So I'm going to put a streak like that across, going against the hair. Then I'm going to drag through, and this only works if you have lots of paint on your canvas. So I'm going to try that. I need a brush that isn't just clogged, so I'm starting with a kind of a fluffier, less dirty brush. I so need this guy out of my way. Very gentle. Between each stroke, I'm wiping the paint off. And now I need to go back in and re establish some of those dark accents in the roots right here. So. 
pull a couple of them through. Over here needs to soften quite a bit as well. Um, I'm laying down some dark to paint into. Make sure there's enough paint. And then some skin. And I know I have a lot to work out over here. I just want to get the hair out of my out of my hair. I don't want to do the hair anymore. So I'm just dragging into that hair with the skin. Wipe, stroke, wipe, stroke. Sorry about that. edge. I need his hair to come over his ear more. Right here. Which is nice because then I don't have to spend a lot of time painting a bunch of ear detail. Which I actually love painting ears but not in a hurry. Here I'm just replacing a little more crispness that got lost from the blending. Sometimes black because it's so oily, if the strokes go sideways, they never look dark because they're catching a lot of light from the shine. Sometimes you have to go in and make sure they go vertical again, just to make them look black. It's a weird thing. I, I wish it didn't happen, but it does. Okay. Yikes. Now for the trouble. The trouble. The mouth. I know his eyes aren't done. I know his nose isn't done, but we're running out of time. So I think the thing that needs the most work right now is his mouth, and that is why I'm going to concentrate on that for now. So let me just study it for a minute. Okay. Let's just take care of that. There's no core shadow there yet, so all I have is the reflected light value. I am mixing up a darker something darker than reflected light so that I can put in this core shadow here. You might wonder, why did you do that right after you told us you were going to work on the mouth? Well, because I have to get the mouth, the barrel of the mouth into the face. And if the face, uh, big structure of the face isn't finished yet, then there's just no way to do that. So here we go. Just bridge that. So this is a soft edge because it is a sphere. So I'm bridging this edge. 
with half tone. Making sure I have plenty of paint on my brush. This is all reflected light value, meaning very dark, but not as dark as cast shadow or core shadow. The jaw it's, is darker than the neck, so I want to make sure that that shows, but it is a soft edge. Wrote in here, reflected light. This shirt's going to wind up having to move or be ignored because I need enough room for that Adam's apple. So every time you see my brush disappear, I am wiping it on a paper towel and then getting more paint. And maybe you can see that, I'm not sure what's being filmed. I'm trying to get all my edges here to work. This way, I'm see how I'm sneaking towards the mouth. Stroke by stroke, I'm getting closer. Dimples. They are fun but hard. So one of the things that you'll learn about mouths is that um, it's very seldom that you can do a mouth by just painting the mouth, you know, the lips and kind of plunking it on there. It's so much more about the, the face around the mouth. And that's why I'm spending so much time here getting this stuff built up before I worry about the lips because the lips are a minor minor part really of what makes a mouth look right
since I'm getting low on time, I have to actually stop talking and think. <laughs> so if you have questions watching me, just write them down. And I might be able to answer them after the fact. Hoping I'll get to his eyes. It's amazing how much longer this all takes when I'm trying to talk. Normally I'd be, be much farther along by now, but I figured you'd want to know what I'm thinking. So yes, I am avoiding the mouse because I'm chicken. But I'll get there. I'll get there. So, just a little note to the file for this video. We are doing this because the whole world currently is plunged in a pandemic known as COVID-19, which is a virus which is um, super contagious and it's kind of surreal the whole world just sort of shut down all the businesses are closed stores are closing people are staying home and working remotely and uh, that includes our lovely little school it's closed right now and I'm doing this video so that you guys have a lesson and I thank you so much for bearing with me and staying with me. It's really a tough time for small businesses and for people who don't have a salary or sick, paid sick leave or anything like that. The ones who are in business for themselves, like yours truly. I just don't know what is going to happen because can't run our businesses as usual and yet all of our bills keep coming as usual so I just don't know it's a very scary time and I hope that this video is um, of value to you because I want to earn my keep I suppose we'll look back on this and say wow it was a crazy time, but we survived. We came together. The world became a better place because of it. Wouldn't that be nice? Instead of the other possibility, which is, oh, so scary. People fighting over food. And <laughs> not being able to get to the doctor. That sort of thing. God bless our healthcare workers. They must be super exhausted right now. All right. Enough of that. I'm going to paint. And I encourage you all to just paint. Don't worry, just paint. And stay home. Don't go out there and get sick. This is an awfully big brush for me to be doing his mouth with. I think I should switch. <laughs> In a minute. See how this is kind of popping out? There's something going wrong over here. Mouth, next to this line of the face, I would say the next most difficult thing on a face is the, the mouth. The shape of the mouth, the expression of the mouth. Everything about the mouth. Well, let me just get that upper lip in and then we'll have a look at it.
at me, I still got the big brush. Maybe I'll just have to make it work. This is too flat. Everything's on an angle, so I've got to be careful not to flatten this out. It's got to go on an angle as well. There we go. Brush. Sometimes when you got to get a light on, you this stage all your brushes are covered in gray you just have to start a new brush to get that white paint on Lost my mirror. Oh no. There it is. Dark in the corner. A little dark in this corner. And I pretty much have to stop with the mouse so that I can get the eyes done, or at least more done. So here we go. Let's just work on the nose for a second. The mouth is just like the nose and or the eyes in the sense that you have to do what's around it to um, you know to make it work. So I need to finish the nose before I go into the eyes. So here we go. I need to bridge this. Let's build a nostril over here. So we've got a little bit of dark right there. Whoa! <laughs> Not black. No panic. We'll just paint over it. A few times. And then we will go in with our lit nostril. over here. Sorry if my brush is blocking the picture.
asking myself, is that a lost edge? And I think it is, so I'm just going to let the side of the nose kind of melt into the cheek on the other side. And then try to pick it up with Row and catch line here. Row, catch. That's just two. Mm, too crude. Time for a clean brush. The white is turning gray. So. This guy has a bit of curve there. There we go. And now I gotta lose the edge, so I would grab some tone and lose an edge, maybe right here. Okay. Whether it looks like him or not, it's a nose. I have to stop. I have to get onto the eyes. So, let me just beef up the course, the cast shadow here a little bit. Eyes, eyes. Well, we've got irises and they're dark. We've got sclera, which is dark here and dark here. And light here. Right now I'm just trying to fill in the empty spaces that have no paint. So the values look pretty good there. Now I'm just going to work on shapes, meaning he's got this very 
lovely worried look to his eyes here. Oh. I think this is an awesome face. I really like it. His face.
Okay, last eye. Here we go. I'm running out of brushes, man. Well, he's lost his um, sweetness. He's quite anxious right now. He's staring coronavirus in the face. I suppose uh, sometimes when we paint, our personal state of mind does creep into it. So instead of the happy-go-lucky little movie star that he is in the photo, he has become a much more concerned individual. 
And I kind of like that, so it shows that, you know, I am filtering. I'm not just copying. I'm actually a conduit for something else coming through me, and I love that about faces. Sometimes you want to know what you're how you're doing in life and what you're thinking about, try doing a portrait. And, um, all of your cares and concerns may come to the surface for good or bad. Alright, let's do this forehead. Do some light hitting up here. A lot of what's making him worried is this little this muscle here is called your corrugator, and uh, when you draw your brows together, it sort of activates, and it makes you look worried. So I want him to be worried. He should be worried. We should all be worried. I'm not really liking this bit of dark right here. Clean that up. And do something with his clothes. Just quick and down and dirty. Something, anything. Let's give him a tie. You'll notice in a lot of Alla Prima portraits, the clothes are just super abstract because everybody runs out of time. So blend that into that transparent underpainting. Get a dark shadow over here.
There's just one more thing. I know his ear is abominable, but I'm going to leave it because I am pretty much, I believe, out of time. I haven't really been watching the time, but I can kind of feel it. But I'm, I'm going slow, slower than I should. You, get, you kind of get an internal clock for this stuff after a while, and you just know you're not going to make it. <laughs> so, I don't know how long it's been, but um, I need to be done. I'm just going to put a little highlight on his lip here. Their lips are usually sort of wet and shiny, so they get a little highlight. Exclamation point highlight. Hope if I had a clean brush. Clean paint. See, you need a lot of brushes to do this. going to call it done. So these are the brushes I used. I used um, I used my number six that I started with. And then I went to the number four. And then I started realizing that my brushes were too dirty and I needed to um, get some that could put white on. And so these are both fours. Um, as you notice, they're all bristle filberts. And then I switched to a number two bristle filbert when I went, I think, uh, I don't remember where I used it, but somewhere I needed something smaller. And then for the eyes, I used these two, and they're actually sable, red sable, and um, they're both size three sable rounds. And you might wonder why, why is a size four here and these are threes? It's because they're different hair. This is boar bristle, which is basically pig's hair, which is cheap. And so, you know, a size four brush is a big brush with a cheap hair. Sable is an expensive hair, and so, you know, a size 3 is a very small brush. To have a brush this size in sable, it would probably have to be about a 12 or a 14. So if, that's just a little trivia for you. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed it. And, man, that ear is bad. <laughs> <laughs> this is the neck. I cannot leave that neck like that. Give me one sec. Here we go. He has to get a little curve to his neck. done. Model's gone home. Studio's been locked up and I'm still here painting. It's not good. two little things to the ears.
most important thing is cover it with hair. Right. There. It's just going to have to do. Notice something over here. Too hard of an edge. Well, see, this is what happens when you panic. I'm starting to throw stuff in there that doesn't belong. So, yeah, this really is it. I really, really, really mean it. I'm done. Brush away. Alright, guys. Thanks for watching. Ta ta.